and welcome back to my channel. On today's episode of Mukbang with me, we have Erin! Hi! That's, that's very awkward. Erin <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually work in the same hospital together and Erin actually has a food Instagram. Yep. So do check out Pharma Food one if you're a real foodie because he makes lots of good foods and he visits a lot of London restaurants. Definitely. So um, if anyone's interested, um, go ahead and follow me because I would love to have more followers at all times. <laughs> <laughs> The food theme today is Guilty Pleasures. So what I have on the table here is my favourite, kimchi ramyun. And I've added milk just to make it a more creamy sauce. And also cheese, sausages and crab meat. Today we're going to talk about Aaron's journey from a Ben 6 to Ben 7 pharmacist. Because recently Aaron got promoted yeah. to a Ben 7 pharmacist. <laughs> <Yay>! Finally. <laughs> Tell me your experience in the interview and what you would like to advise other people who's applying for Ben 7s. Sure. Um, so what I would say is normally the Band 7 interview, if you've got to the point where you're going to apply for the job, um, it's probably time for you to apply anyway. Um, so you've probably been likely doing a lot of the role of the Band 7 anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, mainly just sort of drawing on everything that you've been doing as a Band 6. Okay. Um, so like what? Um, so basically for me, um, we had a lot of staff sort of shortages at our hospital recently, so I'd taken on a lot of responsibilities that were sort of above where I would be expected to be working as a band six anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the questions that they will ask, ask you are things like competency-based questions, so name a time mm -hmm. where you've gone above and beyond for a patient, name a time where you um, have done things for management and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously I'd already had a, a times where I'd gone above and beyond because I'd been put into a position where there was no senior pharmacist so I had mm -hmm. to fill that role. I and mean, I was being referred to as a senior six. Basically the sort of things they will be asking you is competency-based questions. Um, yeah, because they kind of want to see a lot of like you taking the initiative to step out of your comfort zone of a band six. And I feel that when you are applying for a band seven job, they really want to see that rather than your clinical skills as a pharmacist, right? Yeah, so I think um, at that point, your clinical knowledge is partially assumed because you've mm. been working, especially if you're internal like I was, mm. um, then they, they've seen you work in there every day and they've seen your clinical knowledge. And by that point, you should have experienced enough scenarios to be able to, to deal with most things. Mm. But it's more to do with the management side of things, I yeah. would say. And I also think that in the NHS, because we're always well, we're sort of constantly short of stuff. There's a lot of opportunities for you to show how you work and also it helps you shine. So I think that when you're pushed into the position where there's not enough stuff and there's so much to do, you have the opportunity to show others or mostly seniors that you can perform the role of a Band 7 or even a senior pharmacist. Yeah, I would say that's true. Yeah, definitely. Wait, have your first spoonful. <laughs> Please tell me what you think. It looks really good. Um, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> so I told Aaron I was going to make ramyun and he was like, oh yay, but I was going to make milk ramyun. So he hasn't tried it before. Honest opinion. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't have to lie to the camera. No, it's, it's really, really good. It's really good. <laughs> just the right level of spice, I'd say, which is good. I'm a bit of a spice junkie, so that's yeah. good. He can handle more <laughs> spice than I can, so. Yeah. <laughs> Not for you. Denied. And also to fit the theme of an Asian guilty pleasure sort of layout, we have box chrysanthemum tea. Yay. Which is one of my favourite things ever. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Basically, how can you get more involved in management stuff? Um, so I think really is, um, if you're working clinically, you'll come across things that you think could be better. Um, so even in my practice recently, I've come across at least two or three things which I see and I'm thinking this could be optimised. Mm. Um, so you need to find your own opportunities of things you've experienced that could have been better because at the end of the day, it's all for patients. Mm. So um, we're all human, people make mistakes and sometimes things that are designed by people who are much more senior. Mm. Um, sometimes they might have been not as patient facing as people who are young, uh, younger or lower down in the, yeah. in the banding. Um, so it's sometimes good to use that experience to then go to a senior pharmacist who maybe isn't on the wards or covering mm. and, and raise these problems and then they might be able to utilise you and your skills and the fact that you're there to actually solve the problem. That's um, true. And then you can use that experience to get involved in writing guidelines for that problem if you find a gap in the market. 
and then use that to improve the lives of patients basically. So there's always ways to get involved usually around things that you notice mm. and that's what I've done. Um, so I've been involved during the whole COVID pandemic and things in writing guidelines for managing the recovery trial um, and mm. things like that where I found that there wasn't any guidance yeah. and, and it was quite useful to have that. Especially during COVID, like you needed the guidance for junior doctors or yeah. anyone who's graduated early from medical school. So and because yeah. you also mentioned like senior pharmacists, like you could go to them if there's any changes that you want to implement in the system. Yeah. But you can also speak to, I, I suppose, like what sisters or the matrons, just to understand how the nurses work even, because it's also improving the practices of other healthcare professionals. Yeah. The role of a pharmacist has already um, progressed so much over the years that now we're so involved in like clinical ward rounds or even implementing changes. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe 10 years ago, we used to work mostly just dealing with medicines, whereas now we're dealing with implementation of changes, practices, guidelines, yep. anything you can think of. If you feel that as a healthcare professional, that's going to help patients or even help other healthcare professionals in their practices, just try and ask, can you do something about it? Can you improve the practices? Because we're always learning and there's always a chance for change. Just mm -hmm. do it! For people who are watching and you think that you need more interview tips, what can you tell them? Um, so I would probably say is, first of all, just keep your calm um, because um, they're there to give you the job, basically. That's what their purpose is. Mm. Um, and you're there to sell yourself. Mm. So don't be modest. Yeah. Um, celebrate your achievements. Celebrate yes, definitely your... don't don't be modest. Don't be modest because there'll be someone else who isn't who's gone yeah. for the job. So always sell your achievements. Make sure that you make them aware of everything you've done that makes sure that that, mm. that, that shows who you are as a person. An interview is not the time to be humble. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I would say if you're internal as well, um, my mindset when I went into it was to pretend that I wasn't. Mm. Um, even though I knew the people on my panel very well personally and professionally. I decided it'd be best to treat them as if I didn't, yeah. just because then... They're all strangers. Yeah, so um, even though you're looking right at them, obviously now it'll be through a screen, probably, mm. if you're having an interview, oh, yeah. um, given COVID, but um, just pretend like you don't know them. And also remember to speak slowly, because in an interview, you're going to be really nervous, but the interviewer will know that, so don't feel like because you're nervous, you're not going to do well. Just take a minute to breathe, and before you answer any questions, just tell the interviewer, you know, if your mind goes blank, just tell them, can I have a minute to think about it? Because I find that that's okay. They don't actually minus any points and it helps you summarize what you are thinking in a better way so you can sort of present yourself. And they would rather well. you give a good answer that's well yeah. logically thought out and constructed. Yeah. And that gives a good structure. So giving a situation and um, what you did and then what sort of the follow-up and resolution was rather mm -hmm. than if you can't think of a situation, just trying to plug an answer into it that you're not too familiar with. So you, I'm sure any question you get asked, you'll always have a scenario for, but yep. sometimes it takes some time to jog your memory to think of the one that you want. Yeah, because COVID is going to be with us for a long time, I think. I mean, I know the vaccine's rolling out and everyone's getting their second doses, but... Are you in the second dose club? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I got my second dose. That's off the other day. With Zoom interviews, how do you think someone can perform better? Because it's not the same as face-to-face. I don't know why, but I find that speaking to a computer screen is more daunting as opposed to speaking to a person in real life. Yeah, I think it can be a bit less personable um, mm. because a lot of interviews is down to bodily actions and yeah. um, sort of how you portray yourself physically as well as verbally. Mm. Um, but you've got to remember that they know that this is an ideal, an ideal that they would want to have you in there to be able to answer any questions. Um, and don't be taken in by the fact that it feels less personable because these are the people you'll be working with. Mm. So. Don't let that change whether you want to ask them any questions or anything because in my interview I asked a good few questions lots because there's a few things, questions. few things I wanted to know because this is your job at the end of the day so yeah. you want to make sure that they're not going to take advantage of you as well. Um, mm. So take advantage of them because they're there to employ you basically. So um, get what you want out of the interview as well. Mm. He was worried that it wasn't going to set but... It has, okay. sort of. <laughs> Explain this creation. Um, so, it's a matcha digestive base, um, and then it's cream cheese and extra thick double cream cheesecake um, with matcha powder, um, vanilla extract, uh, lemon juice, and then the topping is just sort of white chocolate drops and matcha sort of just all over it because it's the best thing ever. So. Because yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah. So um, there's a lot of matcha in this cake. I, caught, I sort of went overboard with the matcha and made every possible element matcha. So. 
So the recipe asked for how many? Um, the recipe food? said um, two, and there's four. <laughs> and then the base is also matcha, which was not in the recipe. And there's a lot on the top. I'm actually quite excited <laughs> to try yeah, yeah. it. We'll see if there's any. You have to do the honours. But yeah. do check out Aaron's Instagram page, Pharma Food one because he is a real foodie, as you can tell. Definitely. So yeah, um, I'd be happy to see you over there. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. If you have any comments to mention about what we've talked about, do leave it in the section below and we'll see you next time. Yeah, great. Bye. Bye. I'm going to start recording first and then when the cheese cake comes up, oh my god, it might not come out. <laughs> I hope it comes out. <laughs> Otherwise it's going to be a pile.